not my usual style, but you know, we're looking at the outlines here. I thought they looked good. Give them a try. And uh, yeah, they came up a treat, really nice. If you love indie tales, be sure to subscribe here and on Twitch, where I'm live most weekdays. You can also show your support through Patreon or on itch.io, where I upload assets and games shown on the channel. Hey pals, welcome to a new video. Today, we are going to be covering references and using references to create pixel art. I wanted to cover how I use references and the way that you should be using them to create original work um, without looking too derivative. So let's get straight into it. So the first question is, what is a reference or what does it mean to reference? A reference is the application of some aspect of existing material into your work. Now that uh, existing material can be a picture, it can be something from the real world, or it could be indeed somebody else's work. So many of you are now thinking, okay, but doesn't that make my work less creative? Doesn't that make me less original? Something that's taught to new artists is that nothing is truly original. Everything exists in proximity to other things. And uh, in fact, when utilizing somebody else's work or something from the real world uh, in your work, you create what's called a derivative. And the thing that makes something more original uh, versus being theft uh, is transformation. So what is transformation? Transformation is changing an aspect of a composition or structure. Note that we use the word aspect when describing what a reference is. So the thing that you reference, that aspect, if you change it in some way, that is transformative. And legally, we use that word to differentiate between things that infringe copyright and things that don't. So even in the legal sense, this is how we think of um, what is original and what contributes uh, to value in the art space versus something that is um, purely derivative or theft. I like to think of transformation as something that is uh, at its heart geometric. So in this uh, instance here, we have a square and to transform that square means actually taking properties of it and changing them. So we can do things like rotate the square, we can stretch it or elongate it, we can add more faces to the square, we can extrude the square into a third dimension to make it a cube. These are all transformations and they alter the output or the thing that we create uh, to be more original or different. Beyond just changing individual properties of a thing that you're deriving from, you can also merge multiple different things. So you can refer to multiple different references at once when you're creating your work and layer them, transform them in unique ways. So you can simply add them on top of each other. You can you know, take half of one thing and half of another and merge them. You can layer them. You can take certain properties and you know, apply them to each other. So obviously there are infinite ways you can transform work, uh, but this is a nice way of thinking about you know, how to at least formally you know, describe and define what it means to transform something. In the art world, transformation can look like this. This is kind of like merging two shapes, right? We have Mona Lisa, we have Lisa Simpson, simply pushing them together creates Mona Lisa Simpson. We have the composition of the Mona Lisa, we have the art style and the character from you know, The Simpsons. There's our derivative work. An example that's been going around Twitter uh, more recently is this lovely interpretation of watercolor trees in pixel art by Frenrich. Uh, so you can see, right, we have a tree, we have the technique of watercolor, and we have the rules of pixel art that, that bind, uh, you know, a, a pixel artwork. And we have, this is the result, right? What we have is an original composition that is technically impressive. The, the transformation is broad, right? We're, we're transforming themes and ideas uh, in a new way, right? So this is like a really, really great example of how to use references, or at least how to take concepts that exist in the world, you know, trees, watercolor, pixel art, and to merge them in a way that is transformative and original. So when using a reference, try to think about how you can make something original by contributing creative transformation. The transformations are your way of adding creativity to it and adding originality. So given all that, when I'm working with references, I usually grab a multitude of different images and I create a collage out of them. That helps me stay unfocused, right? And not to tunnel vision on one particular um, image so that I'm not copying it directly. If that's an issue that you have, you know, this will resolve that. And I like to pick when I'm making that collage images that aren't necessarily what I'm trying to make, 
right? I'm not exactly trying to find a picture that is what I'm trying to make and to make that directly. Instead, I'm trying to pick things that have the attributes that I'm imagining in my head, right? So I like the silhouette of this tree. I think this is an interesting place to start with technique for applying this to pixel art. I like the color of this tree. I like the shading on this one and the lighting of this one. You know, this is, you know, a painted version. So maybe there's some lessons that I can learn on some technique that's here. Maybe I want my tree to look more painterly, even though it's pixel art, right? So there are ways that you can, you know, by creating this collage here, take bits and pieces, right? And merge them in an original way to make something that is, uh, yeah, creative and your own, right? It's not just a copy. So now that we've discussed using references, uh, let's make something, let's make a tree. Okay, so let's get into it. I'm going to keep the uh, reference on the right here and I'm gonna be working on the left and I'm gonna try not to zoom and scroll too much. Uh, so we'll see how well that, that turns out. The first thing is the silhouette. Let's uh, just block it in with any color. I'm just gonna take this dark brown here, this red and uh, just fill out the silhouette and I'm not gonna copy directly. I'm just gonna create something that's, you know, evokes the same sort of thing. So I like this idea of it leaning one way and another. And my goal is to really have uh, something that tapers as we move forward. So we want the, the limbs to get smaller as they fork and split. And that's, that's basically how trees work in real life. Note that we are creating a 2D tree in, uh, you know, from a 3D reference. You need to take into account branches that are facing the camera. It might be a bit difficult to, to do at this stage, but um, if you look at this, you know, it's a 2D image, so you can kind of just ignore that for now. But when we shade, we're definitely going to be trying to think about that a little bit more. You know, thinking about things like branches crossing over would be a good example of taking into account that 3D aspect. And I really like the way that this is sort of more crooked too. I like that it's not just one straight stump that goes all the way up. And I want to just make sure it looks nice too. So just aesthetically, you know, if we can follow a line, you know, all the way up, that helps a lot. Now I'm starting out with kind of like the branch system of the tree so that I have the structure looking, you know, reasonably well balanced at the start. This is kind of like drawing a skeleton of the tree, really. We don't have any leaves yet. Okay, that's pretty good. There's a little bit of an issue here where this goes a bit too uh, thin, too late. You can really see it, right? If, if um, if it's too thick further up, it's like, okay, so that looks like it's wonky. It looks lopsided. So I'm just thinking about these um, clumps that I'm gonna be adding and how I want them to be formed. And I suppose green's fine for now for our next layer up. So I'm gonna add a new layer and I'm just gonna start clumping these down. And the goal is to really try to create a uh, a sense of volume without completely erasing all of the uh, the branches, right? You don't want to not be able to see the branches at all. And I think what's really important here is like, I'm using a brush size, if we darken this off a little, that's, you know, this big relative to the tree. But if you look at these clumps, right? The clumps are quite a lot bigger than this relative to, you know, the size of the stump. So it can be helpful, you know, if you want to like really replicate what's there to use like a bigger brush for this exercise, just to make sure that the, the global shapes, those big shapes are being represented. You can go back and erase as well, that works too. But it's it's good if you have these big structures um, that make these almost like mini silhouettes, right? Of your bunches, so that you can at least work with them and cut away from them and it's the, the remnants of how you created it are still visible, right? You can still kind of see how it was created. It just helps make that, um, make it look more natural. Now you can, you can sort of lower the opacity of this to see the branches underneath. If you want to like show off some of that structure and you just don't want to guess your way around, uh, you can just, yeah, try to come through here. And um, it'll also give you a good indication of where the um, leaves should be relative to the branches anyway. So you have some sort of understanding of the, the circulatory system of the tree. What I'm going to start doing is thinking about how I can break up this into what looks like smaller leaves, right? Obviously this isn't like a smooth line here. We can see that there's like breaks in it. So I'm gonna start adding some of those breaks in and then I'm going to 
basically trick the eye into thinking that these shapes, these little, you know, inconsistent single pixel sized shapes were used to, to make the entire thing, right? I'm going to make it look like there was some sort of, you know, brush that was used to create this. And that's how I achieve that kind of more painterly effect. So for now that we can just do that by cutting into the shape, keeping in mind that that old uh, lesson that I gave about trying to use small shapes to inform the bigger shapes, right? So if you've seen one iteration of a detail, you will assume that that detail applies everywhere. I'm gonna brighten this up a little bit because I wanna see a background. So we'll add a blue. And I wanna brighten up this a little bit just to give us our base color. Now I'm gonna go back to the shade brush. And so I'm gonna grab the colors that I wanna use and I'm gonna just press uh, my shade button here. And that's gonna give me the, the ideas that I want. In fact, I'm only just gonna use two shades right now. So I'm gonna take this and the, the shade below it. And that's gonna help me build out these clumps. So as I'm looking at this, I'm just thinking about how the lighting is actually going to be applied. And I'm, I'm thinking about which parts are lit up, right? It's not really like left versus right. I mean, there's a little bit of darker space on the inside, but that's really looking through the tree into the branches that are sort of obscured by the, by the rest of the branches when looking at the sun. So these are sort of in shadow and that's why they're darker, not because they are on the left side or the right side or higher up or lower down. So we're not just gonna sit here and shade, you know, along the bottom and say, that's, that's where the light touches and that's where the light doesn't touch because it's not one object, right? It's, it's lots and lots of objects, you know, layered on top of each other. So at best, we can kind of think of these clumps as, you know, smaller objects and we can start shading them a little bit, but I'm just gonna try to scatter out some darker shapes everywhere and then put lighter shapes on top of those darker shapes. So I'm just trying to think about, you know, what's closer to the camera, what's closer to the outside of the tree versus the inside. And that depth is gonna dictate what gets lit up and what doesn't, so. And as I refine this, I'm really just looking at the, the shapes of my shapes, right? <laughs> the shapes of these shadows and thinking about like, okay, what do these individual pixels look like, right? Like this section over here is a little wonky. So how do I flatten that out? I'm kind of thinking of the clumps as being sort of oval shaped. And I'm just trying to emphasize those. I'm also thinking about the bright shapes casting shadows on the shapes below them. So this section here is casting a shadow down onto this. What's important is that you have some kind of rule. If you have a rule that you're following, the rule will appear to flow naturally across the image. Um, if you don't have a rule, it's going to just look like you had random stuff happening everywhere. You know? And trees themselves all follow different, different rules, right? There are different species of trees that have different shaped bushes and branches and the lighting is therefore different across all of them. So it's not really a question of like doing it right or wrong. I'm sure you can find examples of trees that look, you know, really wild and have very, very different appearances. So we just want to also make sure that we're not losing the the unique shape of the tree. So, you know, does this, you know, look like the tree that we started with? Is it overall, is the silhouette looking good? You know, we can do what we want with it if we want to give it some more varied shape here and make it a bit more lopsided. So it looks like when analyzing this tree, you know, what really stands out to me are these very bright sections that are backed by very dark sections, right? These high contrast areas that as we look at the sort of rounding, as this sort of like rolls forward, um, the, our eyes are about here, right? So this is kind of above us and we can see the branches facing the sun. And then as they face us, the contrast looks like it's a little higher. And so we can try to like emulate that by highlighting the base of the clumps at the bottom of the base of the clumps that are towards the middle. And I've sort of even started doing that here, you can see. So, you know, maybe some of this and this. And also I just want to, take this opportunity to just highlight the outside as well, for sure. So at the very top, we're gonna to see a lot of light and then we're gonna come very, very, very sparing as we approach the parts down here. And now is our opportunity to work in some of those shapes that we wanna to use to emulate, you know, the brush. So let's clean it up a little. And I'm just gonna throw in some of these shapes towards the bottom to give us the impression of there being, you know, if this, light shade is at the contrast point between this and this, then maybe this would be at a contrast point between this and, you know, the darkest color. 
So I'm just throwing in these little soft shapes here to give us the impression of, you know, just leaves that are peeking out from underneath. So what we're trying to do here is, you know, keep the big shapes and add smaller shapes to the edges. And that way, uh, if we have, you know, rather than creating smaller shapes that cross over into the big shapes, that destroys the big shapes, right? So if we keep them separate, then the structure is there at those different levels, right? We see the overall silhouette, we see the clumps, and we see the little details inside. And I like really mixing up the background color just to see, you know, what this thing looks like at different, uh, different levels of contrast. Okay, and I'm actually just gonna do a little more highlights here just to go that one step further and be very, very sparing with these. These are sort of leaves that are catching direct sunlight. The next thing I wanna do is do some shading on the trunk. So I'm gonna take this as a reference because I really like the way that the trunk that's exposed to the sun is brighter than the trunk that is, uh, well, the, the branches that are further in the structure. I really like that idea. So, you know, obviously we can take this and start darkening this up and straight away you can see that looks so much more clear now that the branches are creating shadow that's darkening the inside here, very similar to this. And so I wanna give the impression that the sunlight is both coming through this. So you get little bits here that are lit, that are lit up, right? Right along the top of these logs, these branches. And maybe that there's being shadow, there's shadow being cast, you know, on this side. Not exclusively, right? We still see bits peeking out the other side but if anywhere is going to be dark, it's going to be this bit close to the bottom. We do have an opportunity to create texture here so we can get really, really close to it and just work on creating the sense of bark. You can see these, these sort of little rips, all right, coming up through here. This is like texture in the trunk itself. We can start emulating that here. I do want to see a little bit more of that original set of uh, shapes coming underneath. So I'm going to try to just invade this a little bit and show some more. And I want to show, you know, the branch up against light so that we can see that in contrast. That's looking really good now. Wow. And we can add another shade brighter on this, just on the edge here and here and in very select places. And that'll give us that sense of, okay, some of that light is coming straight down and hitting this part of the, of the tree. I think I might work it back a little bit. Some of these darker shapes are a little high contrast. Yeah, I just wanna create an overall more solid flat area of this middle green in the top middle section, just to create more form for it. So you can really see clearly, we've got kind of like this section, this section, this section and this section as like four distinct kind of regions. And we can give this sort of one set of shading, right? Where it's darker underneath. And then this is sort of coming out the side. And that's kind of replicating the fact that we've got these one, two, three, four major branch structures, right? So it was there in the original and I'm just trying to bring it back. It's always good to step back and come back to the original and say, okay, what, did I, what have I lost along the way? Just want to tidy up some of these orphan pixels. Anywhere you see one pixel just on its own doing nothing, you kind of want to be a little careful. You know, if it's not contributing anything to the shape, it can be a bit distracting to see those. So again, just making sure it looks good on light backgrounds and dark backgrounds. At the moment, I'm feeling quite happy with it, actually. Again, some of these orphan pixels are there, just breaking up the picture a little bit too much. So there we have it. We have the silhouette of this one, right? Or something similar. Again, not direct, not exact, it's not supposed to be. We have a lot more of the lighting technique from this tree and this tree. I didn't want to stick too close to this art style because I, uh, we can, I mean, we could give it an outline if we really wanted to. I, I usually wouldn't go for that, but uh, if we go for something like, I think this brown really works or a darker green could be really cool. That's quite nice. Hmm. I like it actually. And then we could do the same thing for the this here. Now, since we are doing this with the outline, what I think I'll do is just brighten it up on the areas where it's, uh, you know, quite bright and then darken it in the areas where it should be darker. And it's going to look just a little more professional. Not my usual style, but you know, we're looking at this outlines here. I thought they looked good. 
give them a try. And uh, yeah, they came up a treat, really nice. Works well with this style. Almost evokes that watercolor look that we were seeing earlier. Do you know the only thing that, that I think got ruined in that mix was the fact that we've got now all these little orphan pixels peeking through. Um, so what I might do is just erase a little bit further around here. I'm just trying to, I'm just looking at the amount of white space here and saying, okay, can I introduce some more white space towards the bottom to give us back some of the shape? Okay, I think we're pretty much there. Wow, that turned out really nice. Okay, since we've come this far, how about we draw some, some grass? So, uh, should be pretty straightforward here. Basically just doing what I always do with my grass. I'm just gonna take this area here and create a little bit more light. Remember the trees creating some shadow. And I'm sort of just pretending that I know what the tree looks like from this angle with the shadow. You know, just creating some broken shapes here to make it look like the tree is casting shadow on the ground. I'm just going to create some nice grass shapes first. Very simple. I'm keeping this piece quite low res for you guys, just so that you can have something to um, yeah, follow along with for yeah, more beginner pixel artists, because I know a lot of my content's pretty advanced, uh, and I thought maybe it would be nice to not go quite so hardcore for once. Maybe we'll go even lower res next time. And maybe we'll outline the grass as well, maybe? And what I like, which I see a lot these days, is when I'm looking at top-down pixel art, you'll find there's this really common thing, this very common idea, where you'll see like patches of like grass being raised and lowered, and they sort of have their own shading. I think I'll do something similar to that here, where I'll take I'll take like a section and I'll outline it and everything as if it's its own Z layer. Let's see if that works. I think it did. I think I'll keep it minimal, the shadow. It's taking away too much, I think, from the piece. Hmm, quite nice. And I wonder if I just pop up some shapes here, if this will look like grass that's... It will! Great. Like grass that's just sort of a bit not as bright. We're sort of creating the grass with the outline. I like it a lot. Let's give the, uh, the grass a little bit more of a shine, a bit of a shimmer. So, there you go, a tree in pixel art, using some references that I collected online. Uh, I hope you took the opportunity to follow along with me and create your own tree or your own art using some references that you were interested in. Uh, and I hope you gained a little bit of confidence using references. If you have any questions about references or drawing trees, or if you'd like to see me draw some more stuff in this style and create some sort of asset pack, uh, you're more than welcome to do so in the comments below. Thank you for watching. See ya. Hey pal, thanks for watching, and thanks most especially to the patrons and Twitch subs who support this channel and my game dev project Insignia. To find out more, click the links in the description below. And uh, if you like this video, tell YouTube by clicking the like button, and then YouTube will tell me, and then I'll make more videos. That's nice. Thanks again, and uh, until next time.